My leader, my lord and savior, Ron Jambo. He's gonna get that poison and he's gonna inject it into the heart of the show. Ron Jambo and his army of Jambortions coming to decimate and annihilate you. <laughs> oh yes. With but one episode between now and total decimation. Tell me this, John Rambo. What in the holy do you plan to do about it? <laughs> the show is a shitty piece of shit. It's the worst thing I ever watched. It's the most horrible thing ever. Who someone ever could come up with something so horrible I could never understand. You die. The Ramborgia dies. And the show finally dies. <laughs> hey Jack! Finish cooking dinner! Shut up! We're having a pasta tonight. You can't have any. On the cusp of 100 episodes, this is John Rowe Presents The Show. My name is John, and tonight we have the great honor of being joined by my mentor and our hero, the legendary legend himself, Ed Trotta, is here. Oh Ed, can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. Can you hear me? You can hear you. We're, we're, we're off to the races, sir. We're off to the races, and can our millions of viewers also? Uh, There's all, all several hundred million people watching this right now. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. Uh, I'm not seeing either of us. Is that all right? That's perfectly fine. All right, as this is you... the art ahead. Okay. As long as you can hear me, then uh, that's, that's all that matters, I guess. Okay, okay. It's always a technical struggle when we do these things. Uh, I... just, just getting started, that's all. And I often yeah. say to OJ, does Jay Leno have to go through this? Does Jimmy Fallon have to go through this? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> what is OJ up to that he couldn't make it? OJ's not here, as, as, uh, as everyone could tell here. OJ at the last second decided to go to Pax Prime, which is a convention in Seattle. Ah, okay. And he got his ticket a couple days ago, and he left today. Uh-huh. So we said, you know what, Ed's coming on, you were planning on coming on today anyway. So we said, Ed, would you do us the honor and be the host for the entire sh episode of the show? Well, and I'm honored. Uh, and to my uh, surprise, you wanted to do it, so that, that's a great thing. To <laughs> your surprise, huh? So it's going to be a great show today, I'm feeling good about it. Good. So I have Ed here. Me too. Me too. All right. All right. So, um... um yeah, Ralph, you, is, uh, yes. Ralph is nearby. He's parking the car. Uh, you know, we, we had a hard time parking uh, in this neighborhood, and I was going to let him out to start the show, and he said, no, Ed, you go up, and uh, I'll join you. I said, okay, I'll leave the door open, so Ralph will join us at some point. Ralph will be on the show. This is confirmed. Yeah. Ed may play a song today, and we got, a, right? and we got a bunch of topics to go through, all kinds of things happening, so sit back, relax, and... Uh, Enjoy, enjoy the soothing sounds of Mr. Ed Trotta tonight on the show. So, Ed, next week will be our 100th episode. I know. That's amazing. You know, if this were an episode of Mr. Monk, you know that show, Monk, with yes, uh, yes. Tony Slew? I do. Yeah, he, he would have insisted on waiting to be on the 100th show. 99? 99? <laughs> what are you doing to me? 99 is important, Ed, so we're leading, it's, it's the lead-in. If you blow the lead, it's like a TV, right? The, the lead-in program and everything. So if you, if you blow that, then the whole thing's messed up. So it's a, an important role here today. Oh, but, all right. uh, I love being on 99. Number 99. Yeah. There you go. It only it can only happen one time. And now I see us, but we're not in sync. I mean, it, this is... Yeah, you're going to be a little bit delayed there. Okay. Because you're watching the stream, so... Okay. Um, so right. 100 episodes, yeah, we started this two years ago. 
It's and, amazing. And over the course of two years, there's only been three weeks where there was no show. It's because basically, I think the last week of December, we would take off because no one's really around anyway to watch. Uh-huh. So it's the only time well, we, ever, we ever missed them was like during Christmas time, so. Oh, you got to um, take a break. got to take a break. Is that too many shows, you think? What do you think? Oh, they were. They, is that too many shows? Too many no, shows. that's a success. No, that means a, a long-running hit. Oh, yeah? Okay. I, I can go sure, with that. You're a hit. Otherwise, yeah, uh, oh, yes. I see. And if you don't take a break once in a while, and they, they don't, then they miss you, you see, and then it becomes even um, An even bigger more comeback. Yeah. Huh, I see. I see. I've heard that once before. You know, if you take something away from someone, then they then you really find out if they, if they love it or not. If they miss it. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? I should just disappear for like six months and then see what happens. If anyone says anything. Who knows? Oh, the world, the world would change, John. We, we can't have that. Can't have that. Can't have that. So, um, anyway, next week's show is going to be a wild ride for show 100. I will be with OJ in the same uh, building at our Stay Ballsy uh, headquarters, our studio, which is actually OJ's apartment building. But we will be there doing the show together. We got all kinds of things planned. Maybe Ed will call. You want to call in maybe for a little bit next week as well? Oh, sure. That'd all be right, great. All right, so we'll, we'll talk about that. You know, get you in there a little yeah. bit for the show 100, because you're a big part of uh, the show. So yeah. it's only fitting that you're, that you're there for that. So we'll talk oh, about see, that. Oh, see, so I'm satisfied now. So I had to, I had to satisfy. So you were going into, like, a rage about this. 99, you were ready to hang up on me. So I was like, right. I got to put the fires out, you know. <laughs> No, there was a Monk episode where a guy yeah. did 99 sit-ups, then he stopped. And Monk was the detective interviewing him, and he Freaked said, you can't out. stop at 99. So the guy did 100, then he did 101, just to mess with Monk's head. Right, right, right. OG's got a little bit of that, too, you know that? Like, when you're watching TV, if you put the volume, it always has to be on, like, an even number, or it freaks him out. <laughs> it's a little strange, right? Yeah. I don't, get, I don't see why people have those hang-ups about things. You know, of all the problems that we have in the world already, you got to add things like that. You, you hang up free, John? Uh, probably not. I, I doubt it, but... <laughs> you know, I don't notice my own stuff. I notice other people's things. It's annoying to me. Well. So there you go. So what I want to do is I'm going to show the artwork for the week. We do this in the beginning of the show. Uh, you may be able to see it or maybe not. I'm not sure if you look at the, uh, the stream there. Uh -huh. I want to kind of go through it a little bit and show everybody uh, what everyone has made. So here's the uh -huh. first one. You may come in a couple minutes for you, or seconds, I don't know. Okay. This is by Mr. Mike Vita. He put this together here. It is myself and OJ as Batman and Robin. It is both both, is both amazing and frightening at the same time. Can you see this yet or no? Uh, no, I just, I still see us. But I do remember a shot of you and OJ as Batman and Robin earlier yes. when we were... Were you frightened or were you amazed? I think that's the two reactions you could have from that. Was I t say again? Were you af afraid of it, or were you uh, happy to see it? No, I thought that was cool. I thought okay, it was very good. Cool. Did you uh, did yeah. you ever check out the '60s Batman show at all? Were you, were you, what was going on? Did you ever watch that when it was on? Which show? Uh, Batman in the, in the '60s. Oh, Batman in the series. Oh, with Adam West. Yes. Oh sure. Oh yeah. I ran into Burgess Meredith once in Chicago. Oh wow. And the first thing out of my mouth was quack 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 because he was the Penguin. Yeah, he was better known for, you know, in Rocky, but uh, he was, a lot of people don't know, he was a Penguin. But that was later. That was Rocky later was 76. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but Burgess Meredith was, uh, I mean, prior to that, he did Twilight Zone episodes, and he was a well-respected actor, so the first thing out of my mouth is quack, quack, and he turns, gave me a stare. All those, guys, uh, all those guys on the Batman show were really good actors, like Cesar Romero, um, I think Frank, what, Frank Gorsh, I think it was Riddler. Did you ever have any kind of run-ins with, like, Adam West or any any of those guys? Uh, never met him. Just Bur just Burgess Meredith, that's it? And you, you quacked at him, that was it, huh? I met Julie Newmar once. Uh, so Catwoman? At, uh, huh? Catwoman, yeah. Okay, right on. One of my favorites. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, oh, and here's a, here's a new picture that just came out. Oh, there you go, up. yeah, you're probably looking it's at it. sketch. Her. It's a pencil sketch. The I, don't show. Know what, I don't know what you got. I don't know what you're looking at. Oh, okay. <laughs> but what, these I'm are, not sure. Are these uh, uh, from uh, fans of the show? That uh, Yeah, these, these people have made this, yes. Uh-huh. So Mr. Mike well, Vita made this one, Batman and Robin. 
Here's the next one. This is uh, our friend Skuma. Skuma got a Stay Ballsy t-shirt. Here's a picture uh, wearing the shirt. You have a Stay Ballsy shirt, right, Ed? I do. I, I didn't think it was appropriate for uh, the character that I was going to do in a sack. All right, well, <laughs> that's understandable, but uh, what do you think about the shirt? Do you think the material's nice? The, the, oh, know? The, it's, a, it's a great shirt. I wear it I wear it often. I wear it often. Last time that I wasn't wearing it is because I had to pick up a kid from a school ground. Right. And I didn't want to be in the school ground trying to explain what it meant. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Uh, Stay Ballsy shirts are available now. You can actually go to stayballsy.com, and there's a link at the top for T-shirts. That's how you uh, pick up a shirt, and uh, that's where you find them. Skuma's looking good in uh, the shirt there. Here's a picture from Ryan. Now I'm seeing. Okay. Now you're seeing. It. Okay, you're a little bit now, behind me. Well, now I'm seeing you as Batman and Robin again. Yeah, you're about ten minutes behind, I think. <laughs> it uh, seems like. Ten minutes behind. It seems like you're about probably four minutes behind. Okay, I saw yeah. a little a little sketch which I thought was very well done. Yes. Uh, black and white pencil sketch kind of thing. Okay, we'll get we'll get to that. This is uh, from Ryan to WN for me. Uh -huh. He's made uh, us as the, the San Antonio Spurs. Each uh -huh. of us are, which is an NBA basketball team. OJ is the is Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili. That's me, and uh, our friend DSP, who you you've not met yet. His uh, he's Tony Parker. So there you go. You'll see that in about four minutes, Ed. Yeah, I'll see that in four minutes. <laughs> Great to be part of the show here, John. Yeah, we we'll, we'll, we're moving Just, through this. You're the, you're the only one that's behind. Everyone else can see this in real time. You're just you're yeah. the only one that's far behind. Yeah. Right. You're the only one that's behind, so there you and, go. And someone's asking, does Ed have an old stream open? And no, you're okay. Okay. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that, Ed. So okay. Mr. Jose Velez, he had a school report to do, and he had to fill out, I don't even know what this is, some sort of, a, some sort of school project, and he decided to do it on the Ramborgia which is what we call the followers of the show, Ed. Uh -huh. And uh, he's wrote many things, and he wrote uh, your quote, which is, uh, stay ballsy, don't take any shit from anyone, but he had to censor it. And he, had to say, he had to say, stay gutsy, don't take any abuse from anyone. Uh -huh. Which is kind of similar. You know, you know is, what? There yeah. was another window open. There was a Mozilla, stay ballsy Mozilla window open. Uh-oh. <laughs> now I just lost something. Oh, you're okay. You're still here. All right. All right. All right, well, you can watch this later. I'll just move through it. This is from uh, I am Liam OBV. He made a picture, an awesome sketch of me as uh, half of, of my face and half of Schnozman's face. Awesome stuff. We thank you, sir. This is from Alyssa... Uh, Alyssa Yock, I think, something like that. And uh, an awesome drawing of OJ and myself. And I'm sorry if I got your name wrong on that. I will correct it next week if it was wrong. Let me know. Beautiful stuff. And this is from Mr. Ali Hyatt. He gave us two different pictures. Blacker than a moonless night, hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is pulp. And uh, OJ's all about the pulp because he is OJ. And here we go, Ron Jambo. $1.50 reward for his capture. So, all right, we're back. Yeah. <laughs> Not a high price on your head. Not huh? a high price, no. All right, we're back, Ed. You still there? I'm there. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, so that was it. That was it for the uh, the Art for Week. I want to point out everyone should check out youtube.com slash stories. I was on his podcast. He does a podcast like like we do. I was on there this week. You can check that out. And um, that's all the business for the week, so let's, let's move on to some stuff, man. Okay. I want to talk about something. A lot of people have been asking me about it. This was the big thing on, on the net uh, the last week. People going crazy, losing their minds. Ben Affleck was announced as Batman. Uh -huh. And there's people just completely going insane. They, they're they're very upset about this, and because uh, there's not a lot of Ben Affleck fl fans out there, or uh, I guess they just don't want him as Batman. They, they feel like they he's don't not, want him he's as not a good fit for Batman. They feel like. Well, let's see. He did the Daredevil, right? Yes, yes. He was Daredevil 2003. Um, and Batman has become a kind of revolving door for, uh, for actors of his kind of echelon. You know. Um, who was the first one? Michael Keaton? Was he first? Michael Keaton was first. And uh, then it was the guy from Top Gun. Okay. <laughs> then it was, uh, I don't even remember about George Clooney after that. George Clooney, right. George Clooney was Christian there. Christian Slater did a couple. Christian, didn't he? Christian Bell. Bell. Christian Bell did the last three. Uh huh. So they kept those consistent. And uh, now it's, now it's uh, going to be Ben Affleck, and it's actually not even a Batman movie, it's a Superman. 
the sequel to Man of Steel, and we'll have Batman in the movie. And it's Ben Affleck as Batman. Oh, I see. It's not a Batman movie. It's a Superman movie. It's a Superman it's, movie it's... with Batman in the movie. Okay. Which is, uh, yeah. So a lot of people like just completely going crazy and uh, very upset about it. I think some people are kind of going over the top with it. Some people saying Batman is dead to me. Aww. They killed. They've killed the character. They've Aww. ruined. They've ruined the franchise. Which I think is going over the top a little bit. Um, you got to. You got to kind of see what they come up with and uh, what it's what it is in the end. You know. And I, I think you know. I think a lot of these guys could do the role. I think a lot of these guys could do the role well. But it comes down to what is the storyline, what is the script, and that's what's going to make it make or break it. You know, if it's if it's a good script, the storyline's really good. Everyone's going to say that he's really good as Batman. But if it's terrible, then it's well, not that's what I was out. about to say. Was just yeah. give the guy a chance, give him a shot, give him a shot, see how they uh, see how they do with it. You know, it's not an actor's medium uh, anyway. It's the cinematographer, it's the editor, it's the, the special effects, effect. special effect thing. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. All that stuff makes or breaks it. Um, all the superheroes seem to be sort of changing guard. For a long time, Tobey Maguire was the only Spider-Man, but right. he hasn't been now, right? Didn't, didn't there's a didn't new some... one now? The last one's yeah. not him, right? Uh, I, think, I think the thing with people, it's like they don't want to see the same. Uh, they don't want to see the same guys getting the the roles. They want maybe a new person could be Batman and, and maybe do a better job. It seems like they only put Ben Affleck in there because he's a name. Is he well, really the best? Is he is he really the best for the role, or is it just because of his name and uh, his stature in Hollywood? Uh -huh. I think that's where people get upset, maybe. Oh, and now I'm seeing. Yeah, four minutes later, here, here's it. And now I am seeing the uh, the split screen of a uh, 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 you as half half. Okay, you uh, yeah, you're about four minutes behind. That's what that's what I figured. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so does that upset you at all? Like, seems like the uh, only the certain people get get all these roles. There's maybe like ten people that get every every big job. Does it seem like that? Is that oh, of course it upsets me. Yeah, because I'm not one of them. Uh, if you were one of them, you'd be fine with it, though. I'd be fine with it. Sure. <laughs> I think good. you know when they when they were casting Lincoln, for example, they should yeah. have looked for someone who wasn't a big star because then you're watching. Uh, you know, so and so's Lincoln, so and so's, uh, you know. Uh, right, right. Because that's what happens with Ben Affleck. Because you're going to go, oh, it's Ben Affleck. That's not ba that's not Bruce Wayne. That's not bad. It's Ben Affleck because he's almost uh, become uh, larger than a role because he's just so known for so many things, you know. Well, he just had such a big hit. Uh, right. Know, with, uh, uh, Argo. With, yeah, Argo. Which yeah. I thought was good. I liked it. Yeah, so did I. It seemed like he was going in that direction with directing, and, and he won the, the Oscar for, for the direction. And he's like, I'm going to play Batman now. I'm all right, sure. Well, I, I'm not a big Ben Affleck fan myself. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, without his friend, without, uh, uh, what was that first uh, hit that they had that they wrote Good together? Goodwill Hunting. Uh, yeah, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, without Matt Damon, I don't know where Ben Affleck would have gotten. But uh, that's a, that's a, I don't know, uh, sour grapes thing to say maybe I don't yeah. know everyone needs a mentor everyone needs a, a champion everyone needs someone someone everyone needs some help right right a little help from my friends so most people are very negative about go, completely going over insane losing their minds um, one thing like I one thing I want to say is uh, it's only a movie exactly and uh, that's only one one piece of Batman Batman's bigger than just a movie and, and I the co like there's comics that come out every week and a lot of them are really good you know, it's not going to kill the character, just just no. one, even if it's terrible. Right. Batman will survive. Batman's been through a lot of bad. George Clooney with that whole thing, that wasn't very good. He made it through that. Batman will survive. It's, it's a timeless. We're going to talk about timeless stuff today, right, Ed? Right. He's Batman tough. is a timeless yeah. character. He's tougher than his critics. Batman's tougher than uh, Ben Affleck, no matter what what happens here. That's right. <laughs> and there's like I said, there's a lot of good stuff that comes out every week with Batman. Right now, there's a comic series. Uh, the storyline is uh, Zero Year. You know, which DC Comics is really, really good. It's probably better than... It's a, probably a better writing than whatever the movie will be, honestly. You should check it out. Uh -huh. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens. But um, one thing that was upsetting me was some people were defending Ben Affleck, right? So there's yeah. there's another side to it. And uh, you know, do you know the character Daredevil? I remember, yeah. Okay, and he was in Daredevil, right? Yeah. And, and the Daredevil movie didn't turn out very well. I don't think it was his fault. It was mainly because the script and the storyline was not very well put together. 
My ex-wife did the uh, costumes for Daredevil. Did she work on the Daredevil costume? Yes. Oh wow, that's that's incredible. So uh, we got to get a we got to get get a, a copy. We got of that. posters of it, so you know there are posters of it around around her place. Oh, that's awesome. The movie, like, the, the problem was the scripted stuff. I don't think it was his fault. But I, what I saw people doing was they were attacking Daredevil himself. And they were saying, well, Daredevil's not a good character. He's a blind hero that, that carries a stick. And he's terrible, and that's why the movie was terrible. And I feel like that's kind of, uh, that's kind of unfair. That upset me, because I'm a big Daredevil fan. You are, well... That's actually my favorite character. <laughs> uh, it, it's nice when... I mean... Uh, it's nice when superpowers come out of someone who uh, doesn't really have them. And as a schnoz man and hole punch, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I do. Uh, you know, I mean, Batman can't fly. Yeah. He doesn't have x-ray vision or he's, he's just very athletic and has a lot of good gadgets. He's very smart. So, you know, and he's smart. Yeah. And that was what Daredevil was about, too. So maybe Daredevil, that's why I mean, Daredevil's been around from the you know 1964, 65. So if the character was that bad, he wouldn't have lasted you know all this time. So again, a timeless character. It wasn't Daredevil's fault that the movie didn't turn out that well. Just don't attack Daredevil. That's all I'm saying. Let's be nice okay. to Daredevil, and we'll see what happens with the with the Ben Affleck thing. But like I said, if it's if it's really bad, you know, Batman will survive. There'll be more hundred more Batman movies coming out. Maybe one of them will be good in the future. And if you like Batman, there's good Batman stuff coming out every week. So, yeah. don't get so don't get so crazy. Don't go nuts. There's people are signing a petition to remove Ben Affleck as the uh, as Batman. Well, if they've started it, it's too late. Uh, it's too if late. Yeah. Announced it. It's too late. Right. Just roll with it and uh, go with it. Can you imagine this going on like uh, decades ago? Like someone gets cast for a role, and then people you know have petitions to remove the guy. Like imagine the, like the Godfather, and they want you know they remove. We don't want uh, Al Pacino in that. Well, I remember out. recently I went to the uh, celebration of Peter Falk getting his star on the Walk of Fame. Yes. And <coughs> the role of Columbo is kind of what made him really mega popular. That role was offered Bing Crosby, and okay. uh, Bing turned it down. Uh, Peter Falk took it on and uh, and ran with it. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. What you know, people talk about a role. I, I want it. I don't want it. Well, what's happening now? It's like the uh, someone will get picked by whoever's you know whoever's making these decisions, and the, uh, the the internet, the fan base will will try to change the decision, I guess. Or have, I know have, I saw have a, a couple of comments going by uh, here saying yeah. that, uh, suggesting that I play Batman. I agree with that. I was about to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, we talked about that in the past, how you would approach uh, the character and stuff, and um, how you could play maybe the, the Dark Knight Returns Batman, an older Batman who's coming back to save the city from the, these kids that don't know what they're doing. Uh-huh. You know? That'd be yeah, awesome. I would need some new tools. I would need... Uh, I, think you got the, I think you got the voice for it, I think. Well, we'd have... To, someone else would have to probably drive the car. <laughs> And, uh, How would you react to that, though? Let's say you got cast for some role, right? And then you, everyone on the internet just go, don't, don't cast this guy. How could you, how could you do that? How would you re feel about that? This would never happen to you because you're amazing. But just well, in, hypothetically. Yeah, uh, well, it, it, would, it would hurt, but I'd prove him wrong. That's all. So you would say, no, I'm going to show you that, that I could do it. Show you. Um, it may be not the Batman that you want to see. Right. Uh, but that some people want to see. All you, all you have to do is move, touch one person, and you've done your job. Hmm. Uh, well, maybe that's, uh, maybe, maybe that's being idealistic, because you also have to uh, recover your budget. Right, right, right. If you lost the studio a lot of money, then I guess you didn't do your job. Is that how it works? Mm -hmm. there's, all, there's all kinds of different ways to look at it, I guess, right? Yeah, but people are forgiven that, too. Kevin Costner... Uh, yeah. With uh, that uh, water world, water world thing, yes. it was a fiasco fi financially. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know that I ever got through it myself watching it. But is it fair to blame like one person though for something like that? Isn't that when something bombs that bad? Isn't that just uh, many levels things went wrong and not just the one actor, one guy? Well, you know, when I was company president of the Company of Angels, we did. Uh, I, I put up four shows. I put up a Clockwork Orange, followed by Animal Farm. Yes. Followed by Kafka's The Trial, 
all of which were critically acclaimed and made money. Then I decided to do something a little different, and I adapted for the stage a Roger Corman movie called A Bucket of Blood. And I learned that it's much more difficult to adapt a movie to the stage than a novel to the stage. And A Bucket of Blood was not very successful, but you're only as good as the last thing you did. Oh, really? Oh, geez. That's, 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 a, that's a, a Hollywood expression. Okay, I've heard it. Re you remembered for the last thing you did. So you can't do one great thing and just hang your hat on that forever. It doesn't work that way. Well, you could do one great thing and hang your hat on it. Yeah, uh, but, but if you do one lousy thing, <laughs> you better try again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, oh, Ed should be Alfred. Hey, oh, that'd be great. that's a good idea. You have to do a British accent, though. You do that? You well, do I believe so. <laughs> Sir, are you ready for the bat cave? <laughs> yes, I am, Alfred. Oh, I just got a high CP usage. Oh, yeah? Is that, is that gonna uh, interrupt us? I'll well, just leave it alone. Yeah, okay. If something goes wrong, we'll, we'll deal with it after the problem happens. Okay. Okay. We're not gonna do preemptive anything here. All right. That's not no. how we work, Ed. We let, for the we, let it, we let it hit the fan, and then we try to fix the, you know, clean up the room afterwards. Yeah. Hit so. the fan. Clean up the room later. Clean yeah. up the room later. That's how we do it. I'll All remember right. that one. There you go. It's my quote for you, okay? Thank you. So, uh, I want to touch on uh, some, some stuff that's going on. Uh, today was 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's, uh, I have a dream speech, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, were, you were around for this. You were young. You were I very young. I was young. I was 13 in 1963. 13. I was in the eighth grade. Wow. And um, I lived in Mount Vernon, New York, just over the Bronx line. It was right, the first. Right, close, close to me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, up. you know where Mount Vernon is. Oh, yeah. Mount Vernon is, uh, you know, is racially mixed, uh, probably predominantly white, but, um, well, I mean, when I was growing up there. Yeah. But I was in Catholic school. So it was very, which was more predominantly white. In fact, uh, there were only two children of color in my class. Okay. Um, and I remember when we had history lessons that involved slavery, or those times, those two students were asked to leave the room. The oh, nun wow. asked them to leave the room. Huh. And, and I, even then, I thought, this is wrong. I don't know that I use the words prejudiced or racial or anything like that, but I thought they have as much right to learn about this as we more even more, you know. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's their, their, you know, part of their heritage, I guess. Um, so even at that age, when you were 13, you knew that th this was wrong. You thought that was a wrong thing. Instinct just told me this is wrong, you know. And yeah. when, I th when I think of Martin Luther King, I think of his, uh, the, uh, his contribution was to the nonviolent approach to civil rights. Um, let's not riot. Let's march. Right. You know, let's uh, because let's march on Washington because they represent the will of the people. Let's show the the our uh, governors. Uh, let's show who's in charge. What the people think. That's how it's supposed to work, right? It's the they work That's for the people. Yeah. And Martin Luther King, he was inspired a lot by, uh, by Gandhi, I believe, right? Yes. As I understand. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't aware. I, you know, kids are born colorblind. Mm. Kids, kids, are, uh, kids are taught to be racial or prejudiced right. uh, against uh, a belief or a color or a creed or uh, a sexual preference. Um, I, I remember my daughter's first preschool was um, uh, premised on an, a, an equal number of different uh, cultures being uh, admitted. And it was rainbow, is what we call it, rainbow casting or rainbow um, uh, attendance. And, and so Spencer is ab absolutely colorblind. She has no prejudice against uh, anyone. Right. Which is, uh, which is the way it should be, and I, I think if you live your life a different way, it's a lot more uh, difficult. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. Of, it's that's pretty hard to live. Your, you know, hate people, hate certain people, and, and all that. It's just, it just seems like more work, doesn't it? It does. I, I, you know, since moving to Co Koreatown, uh, I am feeling a little bit of the uh, 
res uh, of being prejudiced against, right, not just right. accused of being prejudiced. You know, usually it's the white Caucasian male that's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. considered, you know, uh, entitled or. Um, but but uh, when you're outnumbered, uh, you you begin to feel. Um, you feel different when you feel, when you, when you feel prejudice. You uh, can appreciate what those who experience it on a regular basis go through. Mm. Uh, and I also think, uh, you know, when I think of Martin Luther King, I think about my Lincoln play. Uh, when he's standing in front of the Lincoln Memorial, and it's not the size of that statue that that gratifies him. It's the events that took place on the steps which was Marian Anderson's concert in 1939 on Easter Sunday after being turned away from Constitution Hall and it was Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech 1963 and it was the various protests against America's involvement in Vietnam that took place in the late 60s and early 70s and most recently the celebration before the inauguration of our first black president Barack Obama we've come a long way baby yeah right Still have some ways to go, I think. But you, you know, from all of you seen, you think things are in the, going in the right direction. I think so, and I think yeah. And 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 one other quote, uh, if I if I may. Uh, Absolutely yes. Myself, uh, yeah. you know, we have that expression: "All men are created equal." And I have Lincoln saying, "In our preoccupation with the word equal, we often overlook the verb created." I never practiced any particular doctrine, but I am familiar with scripture, and I've always considered creation to be reserved for the Almighty. So I figure it's his hand that puts us all on pretty equal ground. Well said and, uh, and well uh, read by you, sir. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, even though Lincoln grew up in a time where the black man was not considered as equal, he uh, recognized that. Uh, because of a God, all have equal rights, um, and uh, that's what uh, civil rights are about. Right, right. Um, so, and the, I, I spent a, a little stint as a substitute teacher. Really? It's the, it the only job I had other than acting my whole life. Wow. It was, it was when I first got separated, and I was a single father, and I thought I needed some job that was a little bit more dependable. And uh, so I qualified for K through five, kindergarten through fifth grade. And we had this program called Open Court Reading. And what I noticed was that every uh, story was about some uh, specific ethnic ethnicity doing something heroic. Um, huh. And I thought, I can see the good intention here. I can see what they're trying to do but on the other hand I thought just like the nuns sending those kids out of the room this is teaching the difference that there is a difference just that there is a difference uh, even if they tried to put it in a positive light here's a little Eskimo boy saving uh, his family from a hole in the ice or something you know um, just because they made they made a point of different ethnicities being heroic, it was right. also pointing out the difference. So right. that's just what I. At the end of the day, everybody's really the same. I mean, we go anywhere in the world. People have different customs, things like that. But for the most part, people just want to live, love, and have a good life, and uh, you know, go through the day and uh, be happy. So I think uh, we're all the same, really, right? Well, eventually we'll all be the same color, we'll all be the same creed, we'll all be the same if we keep inter intermixing, inter intermarrying, inter you know, eventually, eventually. Let's look to the future. <laughs> look to the future. There you go. So, and I want to talk about, uh, we've talked this on the show before. I know a lot of you guys out there, you've watched this. Ed's Farmer's Insurance commercial, <laughs> where uh, he's a penny, Lincoln on the penny, I'm sorry. Yeah, and uh, a, lot, a lot of these, a lot of guys tricked. Did you see the comments? A lot of people were in support of it. They love you. They were all commenting. And um, I don't know if you, you saw that stuff or what on the YouTube oh. video. The on the YouTube video. Yeah, you saw it. All the comments everyone left for you. Oh, on, oh, the comments on the on the, on the right penny. now. On the penny. On the penny. <laughs> uh, 
You got, I, I think you got over, uh, you got like 60,000 views on that commercial and all kinds of stuff. Oh, so. I did, yeah. I got a lot of views. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, the, you know, the only problem is that a lot of people mention my name. Yes. And uh, I'm not so sure if farmers wanted everyone to know who played the penny, who played the Lincoln. Well, they got, they got fans. They're going to know who, they, you know. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. They, I think they should be happy that it got so much uh, play. And oh, if it yeah. gets enough play, maybe they'll make it a, a network commercial. It should be on television. I'd like to see it on TV. And, um, you know, every, yeah. everyone that's out there, you watched it, watch it again. If you have, It's about a minute long, so check it out. If you it's haven't seen it, watch seconds. it. 15, 15 seconds. 15 seconds you of You can smart. watch it in a minute. You can watch it, like, 15 times. I can't do the math on that, but... <laughs> you can watch it four <laughs> times in a minute. Four times. <laughs> And uh, we'll get that, we'll get that, try to get that on TV, man. That'd be, that'd be something else. I would probably, if I was like drinking a beverage, I saw you on the TV, I would just spit it everywhere. I'd be so happy to see you on there. But um, I want to talk to you about, like, how, was, how did they do that? Uh, what were the circumstances? Was there a green screen? Did you, had, you actually had the penny on you, or how did that work? How did they feel yeah, that? Yeah, no, I actually had the penny on me. They made this big styrofoam penny. And uh, as I sat in the makeup uh, chair, they um, carved it to fit my face and my contour. Wow. Uh, Did they paint you? And then they spray painted the whole deal. Did they paint your face gold? Yeah. yeah. What, is, what was that made of? Copper. And it was, uh, you know, it was made for that, made for the skin. Okay, so uh, it comes right off. Yeah. Well, it didn't come right off. <laughs> Do you take it off? Did, did they take it off you there? Or you had to go home with that and then take it off yourself. Well, they took enough off that I could get home, you know, reasonably. Not get arrested. And, okay. And, yeah, and just uh, soak in the tub for a while and get yeah, rid yeah. of the rest of it. Uh, it was a very, it was a pleasant experience. It's always fun to work. It's always fun to uh, sit in the chair. We had a, a number of different endings to that. You know, it ends with me saying, "I'd like to see James K. Polk do this." Mm -hmm. I, tiny little creep yeah, and yeah. I said how about uh, Stephen Douglas because he was really Lincoln's rival I like to see Stephen Douglas do this short man or um, don't so try this with FDR you might lose your dime so you did a little like improv -y. so we did some improvs we did a few different endings and they stuck with the original and that's fine how long does something like that take to do something like a shoot like that about five hours really mm -hmm. wow how many times did you do that? Hundred? Oh, I don't know about a hundred. I'd say maybe twenty-five takes. Wow. You know, some turning away from the penny and some not. Okay, so a lot of it was just kind of like they had you do multiple things and they chose in the end what they wanted to use. Yeah. So that's interesting. Huh. Yeah. Wow, it's, it's the luxury of having a, a, a lot of time in a studio and stuff. I guess you have to. You can do it. You can do. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, and it was green screen for the rest of it because the background on the shot is the White House. Okay. And of course, the tire. And I did not actually have to flip, obviously. That would <laughs> That'd be great. Device. They spun you upside down. Right. That'd be something. Was that uh, like, like we were uncomfortable in that uh, position at all? Or was it, like, it was fine? Or? No, I was seated. So okay. You were comfortable. That wasn't a problem. No, I was yeah, well, warm. I remember the room being very hot, and I was dressed, you know, heavily. Paint uh, on your face and everything. And the lights, you know, and I'd have to, you know, makeup would have to come in and dab some sweat off, and you know. But wow. No biggie. No biggie. Well, I enjoyed it. I know everyone else liked it. Um, I like to see it, you know, on television. I'd like to do some more stuff with those guys, maybe. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens there. You know. I'd like to work with them again. I, well, I like doing Lincoln anytime. Uh, it's a good man to have bonded with, even posthumously. Yes. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Yes. But this, if, if you don't mind my asking a tech question. Sure. What's going on now? It's still, it's still the delay is so, is so, um, yeah, there's always going to be a delay. Um, it's just how, it's just how it works for some reason. I wish it didn't have that. Cause even now, if I look at the chat yeah, and I uh, respond to some, or I say something, they're not going to hear it for a few minutes. And then it's it's all it's always out of sync, so that's just how it works, you know. Okay. However, however, this thing is put together, I don't really, I don't know. Uh huh. 
Well, that's, how, that's how it works, man. I was just looking ahead at this uh, little speech that I was thinking of doing. Yeah, so I want to, I want to do that. Um, do you want to set it up at all? I know you wanted, we wanted to talk about timeless things. and. and yeah, timeless things. Okay. Uh, What's this all about, we, timeless things? I knew we were going to be looking at art and artwork. And, and uh, there is a speech from a play that I did in 1969. Okay, wow. That I have never forgotten for some reason. I learned it once, and it never went away. Um, and uh, so as long as everyone else is seeing me um, you know in real time are they or, or naturally they're, yeah they're in their their natural time yeah they're seeing it in real time yeah we're in the future you and I are in the future and then they see it where they're they where they are in their time frame okay. well you know <laughs> what I'll do I, is I just won't look at the screen I'll just yeah don't worry, don't worry about that uh, because, well, let me set it up, because this is a speech written by Tennessee Williams, one of our greatest playwrights, uh, known for Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, um, A Streetcar Named Desire, kitchen sink acting, you know. But Camino Real was a real departure for him. Uh, it had a, a huge cast of characters, legendary and historical characters, like Don Quixote and Sancho come in at the beginning and they take a nap and maybe the play is their dream who knows uh... there's kilroy the boxing champ the hero from world war two kilroy was here he's in the play esmeralda the dancing girl casanova is in the play Oh wow! and the set is this huge uh... stone arch upstage center beyond which you can see just endless plains leading to distant mountains and I played Lord Byron. I was sitting at a small like bistro table just listening to the first half of the play. I just sat there listening. Um, and when I had my cue, a character named Abdul rose from the orchestra pit with a torch. And, and I got up from the table and I said, when Shelley's corpse was recovered from the sea, it was burned on the beach at Veragio. I watched the spectacle from my carriage because the stench was revolting. Then it fascinated me. I got out of my carriage and went nearer, holding a handkerchief to my nostrils. I saw that the front of the skull had broken away in the flames, and there was the brain of Shelley, indistinguishable from a cooking stew, bubbling, boiling, hissing in the blackening cracked pot of his skull. Trelawney, his friend, Trelawney threw salt and oil and frankincense in the flames, and at last the almost intolerable stench was gone, and the burning was pure, as a man's burning should be. A man's burning ought to be pure, not like mine, a crepe Suzette burned in brandy. Shelley's burning was finally very pure, but the body, the corpse, split open like a grilled pig. And then Trelawney, as the ribs of the corpse unlocked, reached into them as a baker reaches quickly into an oven and snatched out, as a baker would a biscuit, the heart of Shelley. Snatched the heart of Shelley out of the blistering corpse, out of the purifying blue flame. And it was over. I thought, I thought it was a disgusting thing to do, to snatch a man's heart from his body. What can one man do with another man's heart? At which point Casanova at the other table says, he can do this with it. He can twist it like this. He can tear it like that with a piece of bread. Crush it under his foot like that and kick it away like that. That's very true, senor. But a poet's vocation, which used to be my vocation, is to influence the heart in a gentler fashion than you've made your mark on that loaf of bread. He ought to purify it lifted above its ordinary level for what is the heart but a sort of instrument that translates noise into music chaos into order a mysterious order that was my vocation once upon a time before it was obscured by vulgar plaudits little by little was lost among gondolas and palazzos masked balls glittering salons huge shadowy courts and torch-lit entrances 
baroque facades, canapes and carpets, candelabra and gold plate among snowy damask, ladies with throats as slender as flower stems bending and breathing toward me their fragrant breath, exposing their breasts to me, whispering, half smiling, and everywhere marble the visible grandeur of marble, pink and gray like flayed, corrupted flesh. All of these provided agreeable distractions from the rather frightening solitude of a poet. Or oh, I wrote many cantos in Venice and Constantinople, and in Ravenna and Rome, on all those Latin and Levantine excursions that my twisted foot led me into. But I wonder about them a little. They seem to improve as the wine in the bottle dwindles. There's a passion for declivity in this world. And lately I found myself listening to a row of hired musicians behind a row of artificial palm trees instead of the single pure stringed instrument of my heart. But I am sailing to Athens. At least I can stand at the foot of the Acropolis and look up at the broken columns on the crest of the hill and perhaps the old pure music will come to me again. On the other hand, I may hear only the small noise of insects in the grass. But I'm sailing to Athens. Make voyages. Attempt them. There is nothing else. At which point Byron turns, walks upstage, and goes through the arch, and he's the only one in the play to exit the Camino Rio. Everyone else is trapped there. Even when the Fugitivo girls come to rescue them at the end of the play, these futuristic babes like Barbarellas, no one wants to leave. They'd rather deal with the hell they know than the hell they don't. Uh, and so I've just never forgotten that speech and the lesson, make voyages, attempt them. There is nothing else. Wow. I think, you know, it was an important lesson. Tremendous. So 1969, you were... Uh how old were you then? 18, maybe? 19? 19 yeah. years old, and you memorize this then, you still you remember the whole thing? I remember, yeah, it's just one of those one of those speeches that I don't think I could forget it if I wanted to. Not that I would want to, I think it's a lovely speech. Tell, tell us the meaning about it again. And You just mentioned it before, but uh, what's it all about? The meaning of that speech? Yes. It's watch out, watch out for the success. Hmm. Watch out for the, the masked balls, the glittering salons, and, and all the trappings, because you'll get distracted. Uh, that's what you, that's what it will become about for you. Listening to a row of hired musicians instead of the single pure stringed instrument of my heart. Listen to your heart, follow your heart. Um, don't be distracted by what's going to be successful. Don't huh. be distracted by, you know, uh, by the money. And it applies not just, I mean, he's a poet. And Shelley, whose corpse was recovered from the sea, was uh, the, the poet with whom I would imagine he had a friendship and a competition, right. but a, a mutual respect. Uh, but to see his brain looking like stew and to see his heart taken from his body, whew, you know, um, it's just uh, visceral. That was just a visceral opening, and uh, the speech is to just, yeah, exit, make, make, make voyages, attempt them. There's nothing else. He's the only one to leave. Um, so, wow. you know, embrace change, maybe. I, it, you know, it means something different to different people. Right. I, I don't want to presume to say I didn't even do the research on the relationship between Byron and Shelley, because I had imagined one that was useful for me in the speech and I didn't want to <laughs> my mind was made up don't confuse me with facts <laughs> I think like good art you always different people take different things from it whether it's a song whether it's a book exactly. everyone kind of gets their own um, I remember being in school and they, a lot of times on like in like English class a lot of the times the questions were like what is the uh, what is this about you know, what is the author saying here and you, there's like a right and a wrong answer to the teacher but maybe it's different to you than it is to someone else, you know, or what it's supposed right. to be. So that brings that's a good segue to Animal Farm. Okay. Uh, because uh, here's a book that I don't know if it's still um, required reading in high school. Yeah, but I think so. Uh, yeah. It, it's used as the ultimate example of an allegory. 
because <clears throat> it was written about, uh, for, well, for, for those who don't know briefly, it's about the manor farm and the major boar. The, the, the boar has a, has a dream one night that we don't need the farmer. And they right. kick him off the farm and they take over for themselves. And life is better. Until the pigs learn that they can read and write and that gives them an advantage. And the commandments of animalism start getting corrupted. Um, and uh, of course the allegory was about communism <clears throat> and the three pigs uh, Snowball, Napoleon and Squealer represented Trotsky, Stalin and Lenin I guess the major was Marx because he wrote the manifesto and so yes it was an allegory about communism the uh, reason for it, the rise of it and prophetically the fall of it um, but when I did a stage adaptation of it, I was more interested in the human condition. That if you feed power, if, uh, power that, that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Hmm. Um, and that uh, the pigs took over. And when I read it in high school, I was incensed. I was so angry with the pigs for really? spoiling, you know, yeah. Uh, I said, you know, you're spoiling your own uh, sort of perfect, uh, perfect self-governing thing. Right. Um, and yet, when I read it in my 40s, the uh, the behavior of the pigs was not not even surprising, let alone shocking. Right. Uh, you, you had a couple more years under your belt, and you're like, this is this is true. Yeah, I was this not the romantic. Anymore, <laughs> right, you know. Right. Right. What surprised me were the sheep. Who kept who kept believing in their leaders, despite every piece of evidence to the contrary. <laughs> and so it was an election year, uh -huh. uh, '96, that we did Animal Farm, and I put in the program that that's why we're doing this. It, it's an important year for us to uh, remember not to be sheep. Mm. It's an important lesson for everyone out there. Don't be the sheep. Don't be the sheep. Don't, Don't be, the, be sheep. the pig either. <laughs> either one. Yeah, both are both are poor choices. But uh, somewhere, maybe I don't know. Yeah. Somewhere out there, something you, you want to be. Yeah, because the Communist Manifesto, if you read it, is an idealistic kind of a, of a, a program. But that's not just not how communism turned out. Well, it's like a lot of things, you know. Uh, once. Once people get their hands on it, it becomes a, a tool for them to profit or a tool for them to have power or whatever. And then, you know, people have done it with with everything. The, you know, the Bible, they've done it with that. They've done it with uh, anything that's anything that's pure and it's good. Someone will try to take it and, and manipulate it to uh, their own, for their own devices, I guess, right? I guess. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, uh, there's a little, little pitch on animal farm. And that's that's a piece that's both timely and timeless. It was timely because it was addressing something, um, you know, uh, current. Um, but if you if you look at it from the point of view that it's about the human condition, well, right. well, that's what makes Shakespeare great. Right. Shakespeare's plots uh, are are pretty simplistic. They're pretty straightforward. Right, but it's all stuff that uh, people relate to. I think maybe, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's what his characters go through in their minds it's all the asides you know to be or not to be that is the question and um, you know that's that's not a, a point of a plot that's just Hamlet thinking uh, you know what's it all about Alfie <laughs> so is that what makes something timeless something that it, it's timeless because it, it, it'll work like animal form will work today if it came out now it's still I relevant so. that's what right. does it yeah hmm. There are, you know, revolutionary things like the Marat Saad is another wonderful play. Uh, the full title of that is uh, The Persecution and Assassination of Jean-Paul Marat as performed by the inmates of the Asylum of Charenton under the direction of the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> so they abbreviate it to the Marat Saad and it's about the French Revolution. Yeah. Oh, any story about revolution is going to be sort of timeless um, because it's about uh, overthrowing a, a regime that's right, right. oppressive. Right. Um, yak, yak. Sorry, John. I'm just. Uh. <laughs> oh, we're all listening, man. We're all listening. 
So yeah, certain certain things will last. For, certain things will last forever, you know. And other things kind of come and go. Yeah. Things would you say that? Would you say the stuff that lasts that, is that art? Is that what art is? What is art? What is art? Maybe what is, is art? art something? Art something that uh, I don't know that lasts forever. Art something that moves anyone, that touches someone, um, in in any way. Uh, make you laugh, make you cry, keep you on the edge of your seat. It's always the objective. Um, hi, Mark. Oh, Ralph, yeah, I parked the car. You got the car parked? Uh-huh, got a good spot. Good for you. That's why it took so long to get here. Oh, okay. Now, this is weird because, what's that? Well, because <laughs> you're not going to show up for four minutes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's going to happen then? Well, then everybody will see you talking to me. Yeah. Can I talk to them? I would like you to be able to. You can, so you can talk now. In four minutes, they'll hear you. In four minutes, they'll hear me. Yes, but to them, they don't know that. It's very complicated. Oh, this is, this uh, is trippy, man. This is the power of the Internet, Ed. Whoa. And Ralph. Wild. Yeah. Yes. So maybe I should think of something I want to say in four minutes. No, Ralph, I think that would complicate things even worse. Okay. Never mind. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, the car, you know, the steering isn't uh, great. You know, it was uh, tough getting into that spot. All right, well, I'm glad you were able to get into the building. Well, you left the doors open. Yeah. Where's Yogi? I don't know. Where's Yogi? Yogi. Oh, he, he's asleep on the bed. Hey, uh -huh. Yogi. Yogi. I'm going to go get Yogi. Okay. I'll see you later. Okay. Come back. All right. He's gone. I was going to ask him what he thought about Ben Affleck and all kinds of things. He's gone. All right. Well, well, you know. Ralph, what do you think of Ben Affleck? He just got... Oh, I guess he's not. He's more, of a, he's more of a Matt Damon fan, I guess. I guess he's a Matt Damon fan. He's a Matt Damon guy. All right. All right. Um, let me ask you this question. We're talking about art and stuff like that. Why is it that, uh, you know, something, something that comes out... And some people call it art. Some people say it's revolutionary. Some, some people say it's amazing. But it's not, it's not commercially successful. How does this happen? Why does this happen? Because not everybody gets it. You don't get it. Um, modern art had a hard time uh, breaking in. Uh, I don't think Yoko Ono was uh, popular immediately. Um, uh, I did a play once called Show Your Wound about Joseph Boys. He was a... Uh, uh, performance artist uh, who struggled but tried was was trying to uh, uh, well that's a, you, you know yeah you, you ask the tough ones John <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to pick your brain uh, you know that question I don't think there's an answer I think it's uh, I think for in order for something to be really successful it's some kind of a, a magic formula in a lot of ways you don't really it's something it's something you could plan out because if you could everything would be successful right you would know what the the math equation is to make that successful commercially right. um, well that's but, sort of the star system you know you know that if you put Jack right. Nicholson in the movie pe a certain number of people are going to see it just because they want to see him right right okay so there's certain uh, there's certain things that are always constant I guess right or if Steven Spielberg makes a movie they want to see a Steven Spielberg movie uh, right so that's where you get the attachment of the name yeah but like but his first like his first thing no one he didn't know that he was going to be Steven Spielberg. He was just Steven Spielberg at that time, you know. Not the right. Steven Spielberg. So he had something happen that that launched him, you know. I guess once you get behind the wheel, of, you know, then you're, then you're driving the car. But to get to that point, I think it's, just, it's, just, it's beyond insanely difficult to do, right? Uh, I, yeah, I'm still waiting for my breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this I, uh, you know, this I is it tonight, as the show 99. This is it. I, this is it. Well, I'm <laughs> trying to make the most of it. Um, and, you know, there is an echelon of actors that I belong to that are, we, we consider ourselves meat and potatoes, full service. You know, I'll do commercials, I'll do episodics, I'll do features, yeah. small parts in big movies, big parts in small movies, voiceover work, you know, whatever. Um, and,. Uh, Stardom, I don't know. I ha may have had shots at it. Um, people thought I was nuts to uh, go into Equus and play a horse after being in Godspell and kind of splitting center stage with Jesus. 
Some people uh, said you shouldn't have done that or something, or they should don't yeah, do that. Think, yeah, you, you were just singing and dancing. You had solos, you had drama and comedy, and you know you had this great role, and, and now you're going to go be a horse. Um, but actually, I loved playing a horse at Equus. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. After all, it was Equus. It's the title role. So you don't you don't regret regret that decision because you you feel proud of your work with the with the horse. Can't afford to regret it, and I did move up along the way with it because after playing the horse, I, I also understudied Dalton the stable owner, and when I joined the Broadway company, it was as Dalton the stable owner, um, and I had a couple of scenes with Leonard Nimoy, oh, wow. and, huh. um, and then uh, I was anxious to get back to playing a horse, frankly, after playing the stable owner, and then. Well, see, that was 76. Four years later, on a guest artist contract, I got to play the psychiatrist, the central character himself. And playing Dysart in Equus was uh, one of my favorite experiences ever. So if I hadn't started out as the horse, I may never have gotten to that experience of playing, uh, of playing Dysart. Right, right, right. It taught me about wearing my own shoes on stage. What do you mean by that? Wearing, what does that mean, Ed? Wearing your own shoes is, um, is in a sense, being yourself. You know, I, I think I said on another show that uh, shoes and hats were the two most important costume parts. Oh, yeah, yes. Remember the, doing the little hat uh, show? That's right. And, uh, and shoes connect you to the earth. They make you walk a certain way. They connect you to the earth a certain way. And when I looked through the script of Equus for uh, physical details about how to build this character, there was really uh, nothing. There were, there were no clues. This, this show was running in rep, meaning that you know two nights a week you'd be Dysart, two nights a week you'd be James Daly in championship season. Now James Daly was a guy who had false teeth, cheap suits, I decided that he walked backwards uh, because in the um, in the basketball game that they set up that they won the high school championship, he was driving for the hoop and he passed the ball to Martin at the foul line. So I decided he was a guy who backed away from opportunities in life. And that's why he wound up being a high school teacher, a high school principal or something. And so I had a lot of physical things to work with, the false teeth, the, the ill-fitting suits, walking backwards. When I looked at Dysart, there were no clues. There were no physical um, details. And so uh, I put on my own shoes. After all, I'd been connected with the show for two years. Right. And I had sort of taken on all the questions that Dysart had, suddenly I had. So I could uh, walk to the apron of the stage, address the audience, and say, a child is born into a world of phenomena all equal in their power to enslave. It sniffs, it sucks, it strokes its eyes over the whole unaccountable range. Suddenly one strikes. Why? Moments snap together like magnets forging a chain of shackles. Why? I can trace them. I can even with time pull them apart again. But why at the start they were ever magnetized at all, just those particular moments of experience, I don't know. And that became my question too, not just dice arts. Oh, now on the screen I see, uh, I see Ralph. <laughs> wow, way yeah. behind, man. Yeah, I'm way behind. Takes a while for go, go to from New York to LA, so that's what happens there, I guess. That's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's that's it's heavy stuff. Yeah, Beautiful but. Beautiful stuff, Ed. There's another. There's another speech from. Uh, there's a speech from uh, Equus that stays with me forever because whenever someone uses the word normal. Okay. Normal. Yes. All right. We use that word all the time, don't yeah. we? Normal. What's normal? No, that's normal. This is not normal. You're not normal. That guy's not. No, that guy is normal. Right. Get a normal well, job. Get a get a normal life. Yeah. Stuff like that. Well, Equus is a play about a psychiatrist trying to make a kid normal kid who blinded six horses with a metal spike one night. That's pretty abnormal. A little bit, a uh, little bit. A <laughs> little bit. And so the magistrate who turned uh, this kid over to, uh, to, the, to, to the shrink, um, uh, she said, you're trying to return him to a normal life. 
normal, normal. What is that? You mean a normal boy has one head, a normal head has two ears? No, you know I don't. Then what else? Okay, the normal is the good smile in a child's eyes, but it is also the dead stare in a million adults. It both sustains and kills like a god. The normal is the ordinary made beautiful. It is the average made lethal. The normal is the indispensable murderous god of health. And I am his priest. My tools are delicate. My compassion is honest. I have honestly assisted children in this room. I've talked away terrors and relieved many agonies. But also, beyond question, I have cut from them parts of individuality repugnant to this God in both its aspects, parts sacred to rarer and more wonderful gods. And at what length? Sacrifices to Zeus took at the most surely 60 seconds each. Sacrifices to the normal can take as long as 60 months. Wow. So it's a little argument about, you know, ab being abnormal, being okay. <laughs> Right, abnormal is normal, maybe. Yeah. And there is no normal at the same time. What was the uh, quote that you told me one day? One day we were having a we were having a conversation, and uh, I mentioned something about um, I, I I was I was saying something about how people seem to like the same things. People don't like like things that are different. I was trying just was trying to say they want it, they like what they what they know. And you gave a quote about gods and the gods, uh, the old gods and stuff like that from Equus, I think. Do you remember oh, this yeah. at all? Uh, yeah, I quote Equus a lot because he, um, Dysart had a lot of sort of self-revelations during right. his experience with that kid. Yeah. Um, Do you have that quote on your, on your mind right now? I'd like to hear, I, I, it stuck with you when you told me that. It was the old gods die and know that you can't kill oh, a god yes. and all that stuff. That's right. Yes. Um, I remember, since you told me this, it was a couple of weeks ago, I remember that every day it sticks in my mind. If I had a son, uh, no, um, what, which gods, the old ones, before they died, gods don't die, yes they do. Uh, right, the not just the old it. dead ones with names like Zeus, no, but living persons of place and genius. Spirits of certain trees, certain curves of brick wall, fish and chip shops, if you like, and slate roofs just as of certain frowns and people and slouches. I'd say worship as many as you can see and more will appear. Well, that's about, to me that's about like changing, you could change anything, you know, like you can't, you know, there's, you can't kill the old gods, you can't kill the gods, that's how things are. Right. I think that, to me, you know, that's why I take it is like, you know, you could change things. Right? Is that, is that, is that correct? <laughs> A little you can bit. believe it, you know, I, I mean. Uh, it is what I want it to be. It is what I want it to be. Look at the Native Americans. They believe in a whole, in a whole range of gods. Right. Um, uh, not just Mother Earth and Father Sky, but, uh, you know, the, the totem poles were images of, of eagles and, and coyotes and snakes. And, uh, um, well, that's... Um, what was that called? Uh, when you worship, when you worship in nature, and you worship a variety, um, poly, po poly something. Yeah, something like that. There you go. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I got you. I went to. We both went to Catholic school. We don't. We don't remember. <laughs> I went there too, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it it wasn't because my father wanted me to be a priest. It was it was because <laughs> you were supposed to get a better education if you went. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why um, that was assumed. But right. when I came home at nine years old, telling him I wanted to be a Trappist monk, <laughs> he got pretty upset. You know. <laughs> oh yeah? Did you? Uh, how and far did you? I went to this school to be a priest. No. How far <laughs> did you? How far did you go with the with the Catholic school? I didn't have girls in my class until I got to college. Oh, wow. So you did the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. I went to, after uh, St. Ursula Elementary School, I went to Fordham Prep for a couple of years in the Bronx, and then I went to Archbishop Stepanak in White Plains. Oh, you wow. Know it oh, yeah. Mamaronek Avenue. Yep. Mm-hmm. Go down there once in a while. Get some, uh, get some food. Yeah. So, Ed, you're working hard for us today, man. You did a bunch of, bunch of speeches and all kinds of things. Do you feel like doing a, a song today, or what's going on? 
You ready for a song? If, you're, a song. if you're ready to do it, we'll listen to it. We'll I tried to, to think of this theme of, of, of things being timely and timeless. And, yes. And, uh, and there was, a, I think the first time I played for you guys, it was uh, you wanted something from my generation. Okay. Uh, and um, I had a few in mind. I think I've, I think I've been through them, but not this one. Right. Uh, Something's happening here But it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there He's telling me I've got to beware It's time we stop Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down Battle lines are being drawn Nobody's right if everybody's wrong Well, there's young people speaking their mind They're getting so much resistance from behind It's time we stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down What a field day for the heat Thousands of people in the street They're singing songs and carrying signs Mostly say hooray for our side It's time we stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down Paranoia strikes deep Into your life it will creep When it starts when you're always afraid You step out of line The man comes and takes you away It's time we stop Children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going You gotta stop Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down would have been better if my guitar wouldn't do it. Very nice, very nice. But you, that was written, oh, 68, 69, Buffalo Springfield. Buffalo Springfield, yeah. Uh, huh? Yeah, I was, I was Buffalo Springfield, right? Yeah. Uh, and probably about the National Guard being brought out to keep control over the things that were going on at Haight Ashbury. And, um, you know, that was the era when we also had the Kent State shooting. and Right. But when I thought about it, there's a man with a gun over there. He's telling me i got to be wary. we got people with guns these days, too. Yes. You know, uh, kids have been locked in a basement with a, with a game that made them think they could go into a school and blow away a bunch of kids. Or we got an ex-L.A. cop who... Uh, who took a little revenge out for uh, being um, let go, he thought, for racial reasons. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, and people are always carrying signs. People are always protesting something. And all the signs say is hooray for our side. Right. So, yeah. you know, I thought of this song being pretty, uh, both timeless and timely. <clears throat> right, right. I think about that, like that. The, there were songs that came out during that era that had to do with real things going on in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and people, it was, you know, had they were successful. And uh, you know, we're talking about things that aren't successful that are, you know, art and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, people were saying things back then. People were listening and wanted to hear it, you know. I don't know if we I, have that anymore, and you know, it's kind of a sad thing. Ah. You know. We're not a united generation right now, huh? Uh, what is I, I, I nickname it the text generation, you know, because for a while it was next gen, and, uh, um, gen X or gen next, and now I think it's gen text. I think everybody texts everything. 
I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know. I'm not you know. sure. Well, that's how the song starts. But you look at that. Look at that. Something's it's, happening. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, something's happening. Right. But what it is ain't exactly clear. But I mean, look at that era. You had you had songs like that. You had um, you know, Martin Luther, you, had, you had leaders like Martin Luther King saying things. You know, I think we need a little bit of that today. We need a little bit. Need of a lot of that today. We need yeah. a little bit. You know, we need some great people to step up and uh, and and lead us. You know, or, or tell us, some, inspire us, not lead us, but it's, you know, give us some inspiration, maybe some motivation, right? Yes. Uh... I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty apolitical. I, yeah. uh, I kind of, you know, I'm kind of my father's son that way. You know, it's hard to trust anybody who even wants that job. <laughs> is what he would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, he he wouldn't vote for presidents. He would vote for local government and local ordinances and and gubernatorial races and things like that. But. Um, presidency was something that um, he, he didn't feel he could trust anybody who would want to take that job but you know that's that's just my dad he, yeah. uh, you know, well not, that's better than being you know, someone so far on one side or the other that they're they become sheep I think we talked about animal it all comes together in the end Ed yeah you don't want to be the sheep you don't want to be the sheep right right there you go so you want to uh, well, we get to maybe some calls maybe some uh if you could see the chat, I don't know if you have the chat going there. You can maybe take some questions from there. I'd be love. Yeah, I'd love to. If you see any questions in there, you can just call them out. I don't know what's going on in there right now, but uh, <laughs> uh, if you guys want to call in as well, the uh, on Skype is JRP the show, JRP the show on Skype. Simeon I am. If you want to talk to myself, talk to Mister Ed Trotta, and then uh, we can do that. Is someone, is someone going to come on the screen, or we're just uh, going to get? If somebody, if somebody wants to call in, okay, we got a couple people trying uh, right now. Okay. What do we got? Let's let it fill up a little bit. Give it a second or two. You got? I, if I, you want to ask some questions in the chat as well? We could do that. Also. You know? I do get a little. Uh, oh, she wants attention. I, I, I do get a little distracted. Awesome, good song. Either way, well done. Encore, good stuff, really. But yeah, they're still be they're still behind. So that's that's why. Oh, they're still behind too. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're still this generation people. sucks. Everyone here, everyone here needs to have fun, inspire. Wow. Um. All right. Wow. All right. Let's uh, see. We got a couple of people on. Let's get some calls in here. Okay. Let's get a call in. I'm doing too much reading. Right, we got a couple gentlemen that have been on before with you. Want to want to get on? So we first we hear Mr. Uh, Moonsboro. I'm going to call you. Okay. Moons, bro. Yes. Hey. How's it going, Moons? What's up? What's going on today, man? Um, had a, had a fr first day of school today. First day of school today. What 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 are you doing? Yep. Where, where are you in school? What, what level is this? Uh, sen a senior in high school. Yep. How's that? How's that going? Uh, pretty pretty fun. I actually wanted to talk to Ed, see if I get some suggestions. Uh, I'm in drama three class, and we need to do um, a Shakespeare piece pretty soon. I was wondering if you had any um, maybe suggestions for would be a good one because Shakespeare isn't really my my best thing. I'm more of like I'm good at like sketch comedy and improv, so Shakespeare isn't really my uh, my highest level thing. I see you like sketch comedy and improv. Well. Yeah. I'd recommend Romeo and Juliet. It's a well-known story. Everybody knows it, and it's uh, it stars a lot of young people, a couple of gangs, um, and uh, and if you want to be the funny guy, go after the role of Mercutio. Uh, right. uh, he has how about, um, um, how about monologues like the monologue from something would be would be a good play uh, for a monologue from from Romeo and Juliet from uh, any from what do you think would be a good like entry level Shakespeare monologue. Um, well, for Mercutio, he has a speech that starts, uh, Well, I see the Queen Mab hath been with you. And then uh, that's a, um, that would be a good audition piece for that role. 
but if you just want to do uh, a Shakespeare monologue in general, uh, mine is the dagger speech from Macbeth. Uh, I think it's easy to understand. Um, you're a, a, maybe a little young for Macbeth, but not terribly. How old are you at senior uh, year of school? 17. Like 17. 17. You know, uh, Macbeth is a prince. Um, and he's uh, he's and he's been told by the witches that uh, he's going to be king. So he thinks he should just lay back and wait for it to happen. But his wife's a bitch, and, uh, and she makes him. So she says, "Well, then go kill the king, so you can be the king." Right. And he wow. he he's torn, but there's a there's a speech where he thinks he sees a dagger. Is this a dagger which I see before me, the handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not, fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain? That's a, a, a kind of an easy speech to understand. Um, but you don't necessarily have to do Shakespeare. You know... Here's an interesting uh, thing. Uh, when we were casting for a Clockwork Orange, some of the uh, board members said, "Well, so since we're taking in new company members, let's not let's let's discourage them from doing any Shakespeare." I said, "Why?" They said, "Well, because we're first up is Clockwork Orange." I said, "So you think of Clockwork Orange as classical or contemporary?" And they said, "Contemporary." I said, "You're wrong. Clockwork Orange is a very classical piece." It's presentational. It's uh, it, it uses a different language, the NADSAT language. Are you familiar with the Clockwork Orange? Um, I think I've I've read a little bit of it, but I haven't uh, I've never seen it or watch the movie. Really go through the whole thing. Yeah, you, well, yeah, you could watch the movie, but you know what? Uh, Anthony Burgess, who wrote the book, did not like the movie version. Really? Okay. Yeah. I'll watch it. Uh, but, <laughs> but you can watch it just to get the, an idea, but. You know, they talk in, uh, there was me, that is Alex, and my three droogs, that is Pete, Georgie, and Dim. We were in the Corova milk bar making up our Rasu ducks what to do with the evening. Or there's another speech later on. Uh, then I found they were strapping my rookers to the chair arms, and my noggers were like stuck to a footrest. Seemed a bit bazoomy to me. But if you can do, I'm just thinking of the guy. Uh, who uh, auditioned for Clockwork Orange using Henry V from Shakespeare, and I said, "That's that's that's Alex's dad. That's that guy's going to play the dad." Um, so to call something classical doesn't necessarily mean Shakespeare. Is all I'm saying. And I, and if you haven't decided on which play to do, A Midsummer Night's Dream is a lot of fun, uh, and it's lighthearted. Um, and you could play Lysander or one of the lovers. Um, I've actually uh, I've done a scene from uh, Midsummer's Night last year. Actually, it was pretty fun. Oh, okay. So, uh, have they picked what Shakespeare they're gonna do? Um, it's like uh, it's like an individual thing where uh, we either do monologues or like maybe uh, two-person, three-person scenes from different uh -huh. Shakespeare um, plays. Uh huh. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet. So that's why I was on asking you to see if you have any good suggestions for something to do. Well, you know, sadly, I haven't done enough Shakespeare for my taste. I've done The Tempest. I've done Macbeth. Um, I've done Midsummer Night, uh, not Midsummer Night's Dream. I did Measure for Measure. Uh, we did Measure for Measure as a rock musical. Because <laughs> that was really? popular at the time. Was rock to, musicals was the thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, not enough. I haven't done enough Shakespeare. It's the best. Uh, um, Shakespeare and Neil Simon are both very good uh, authors to, uh, to, to learn timing from Neil Simon, comedy and timing. You learn very well from Neil Simon. Uh, learning how to internalize and become a character, you learn from Shakespeare. Uh, and it'll carry into any um, genre of theater. It's like learning ballet. Mm, all right. I'll tell you what, Moons, whatever you do, man, you know, if you, you get a monologue going, next time Ed's on, you come on and do the monologue for us. All right. Sounds How's good. How's that sound, right? All yeah, right. $30, $30 an hour. <laughs> yes. We'll, we'll critique it. 
I'm great. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Good luck All with right. senior year. It's a fun time, you know. Good luck with it, Moons, bro. All right. Thanks, thanks man. Thanks you got college. it, buddy. Yeah, thanks. We'll see see you later, dude. All right. It's Moons, bro, everybody. Was anyone else interested in calling? Oh, yeah. We got uh, Caesar uh, here. I'm going to call him right now. Okay. Let's get him in here. I don't think we've ever talked to him on the show before. Okay. Caesar Alvarez. Yes. Caesar. Something's loading. Uh, hello? There he is. Hello. How's it going, man? Hello, hello. How you doing? Hello, hello. Can you hear us? Caesar, are you there? Hello, hello. You guys hear me or no? We can hear you. Hello, hello. Can you hear us? Yes or no? I don't well, think how's he going to answer if he can't hear you? I, don't I think can't he... hear you guys. This is going to be an issue. I don't know if you guys can hear, all, hear me, but I can't hear you guys. Well, that's not going to work. Let's call you right yeah. back. We'll call him right back. I can't hear okay. anything. Look crap. We'll call you right back. We'll call him right back. <laughs> so let's say before, Ed. Jay Little doesn't go through this, man. Right? You yeah, I... <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta laugh, you know. So you're trying him again. You're calling him again. Yeah, we're trying it again. Maybe something was uh, okay. something was off. Yeah, like his speakers. Maybe, Caesar. Can you hear us? Hey, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, there he is. How's it going, did man? What did you have to plug your speakers in? Is that what happened? Hello, Caesar. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good, but, um... Huh? I don't think the issue's still fixed. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you could hear us. Caesar, okay. we'll get you next time, man. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. Seems like it's not working out. We'll get him another time. That's the business, Ed. Yeah, that's showbiz. That's showbiz. Uh, I would call Mr. Ali Hyatt. Just trying to get him in here. Let's see what happens. Who knows? Anything could happen here. It's part of the fun. Oh, I like his logo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Is that a little ninja? Little ninja, little, little uh, samurai guy. Little samurai. You know, I don't think he's there. Hello. Ali. What did he leave? I have no idea. Oh man. <laughs> I think things are, things are broken down, Ed. I I Did I alienate everybody, John? Something went wrong with the... Uh, something was going on. The powers that yeah. be are... Oh, hello. Ali? Yep. Ali? Yeah. How's it going, man? Are you there? Yeah, it's going fine. I can have double audio for some reason. Okay. I, I can't quite hear him. A little low. How's it going today? What's going on? Yeah, it's going fine. Just played the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. How was, how was that? Yeah, it's good. Awesome. There was, an area, there was an area where it wasn't rendered, and you just fell into the sky. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> so you've been making a lot of art for us, I've been noticing, the last couple of weeks, man. I really appreciate that. I want to thank you personally. Giving us a lot of good artwork. I still have more. You got more coming, huh? Yeah. Awesome. So way more. You got, uh, you got a question, um, uh, question or anything you want to talk about today? Yeah, I have a question for Ed Trotter. Have you ever heard of the play? Play. The Inspectacles. The Inspectacles. Oh, no. oh yeah. Uh, wearing glasses on stage? No, Spect the... I meant the Inspectacles. It's a play. Inspectacles? Is that, how it, is that right? Is that what you're saying? Inspect Inspectacles? I'll type it in. All right, type it in. I don't have no idea what you're saying. I don't quite understand the question. He's gonna no. type. He's gonna type it for us. Oh, okay. Let's see what it is. Do I click on something? No, I'll I'll see it. Okay. <coughs> Did you type it, sir? Yeah, I typed it. I didn't. See, where is it at? Send it. Uh oh. So I type it, type it in the IM. What do we got? 
I think we got Ali in the middle of playing some game. I don't, I, I don't know what's going on. How could he be doing that? Oh, here it is. Okay. She wants to... All right, do I click okay, on I it? it? No, no. He wants to know if you ever heard of a play called The Inspector Calls. Inspector, Inspe Inspector Calls. Inspector Calls. Yeah, it's a play. Well, he wants to know if you ever heard of that. How does he spell calls? C-A-L-L-S. Okay. Uh, no, that doesn't ring a bell. Okay. Inspe what, do you, what do you have to tell us about it, uh, Ellie? Uh, nothing. It's just something I'm doing for school. It's about, what's it about? It's about this inspector who's investigating suicide of some woman. Okay. It's interesting because we have to do an assessment on it. All right. Well, uh, are you in? The, are you in the play? Hopefully not. I'm not. I'm not that good at acting. No, you're just checking it out or what? Yeah, something I have to do for the school. Okay. Cool. All right, man. Thanks for, thanks for uh, giving us a ring. Hmm. Check us out again. You know, keep sitting in the art. I really like it. Good stuff. I think there's something else I was gonna ask you. I can't remember. All right. Um, calls back if you if you remember. Okay. Thanks for oh. calling, Ali. All right, you later, dude. All right. <laughs> so, um, have you ever heard of a play? I got, I got a question about a play for you. Yeah. The Runner Stumbles. Have you heard of this the play? Runner Stumbles, yeah. You have heard of that? I have. A friend uh, of mine, uh, I got a friend that uh, I would uh, like to have you talk to one day, but he's he's an actor. He's hard to track down. I, he goes, I go weeks and weeks without hearing from him, you know. I don't know what he's doing. But, um, he was, yeah, he was in The Runner Stumbles. I saw him in that. I thought it was pretty good. A good play. Do you remember who wrote it? Is it Tom Stoppard? Is it, I don't, uh, I don't remember. No. I don't remember. But it's, yeah, it's about, like, a, a priest and a nun. And they fall in love and all that, all that jazz, you know. Uh-huh. So. I'm not familiar with it, but I know it was a hit of, of some nature. Because, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Right on, man. I, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. You got any uh, anything else you want to mention to anybody or final words to everybody? Or what's going on? Uh, just a shout out to everyone who watches and uh, everyone who supports uh, the show, um, who uh, checks in on my uh, fan club page, and and folks who watch uh, uh, the uh, um, Sh uh, Schnozman Hole Punch show. Uh, and um, you know, uh, yeah, keep uh, sending those cards and letters. I'm trying to get, uh, I'm trying to find a way to respond to the requests that I'm getting for autographs and photographs, especially for people from the Ukraine and China and uh, Russia. You know, um, uh, the the postage and the, and the photographs. Uh, I, I I've done a bunch, but I'm I'm trying to find a way that I can do it via email or, or text, you know. Uh, right, right. So... That, yeah, they, email, email might be interesting. I don't know. I'll, I, I might be able to help you out. They'll come up with some ideas. Uh-huh. Okay. If you could help me out with that, that'd be great. Let's get, uh, you know what, let's get one more... Sneak one more call in. we got Mr. Uh, Mike Vito wants to get on. And uh, let's, try to, let's try to sneak it in real quick, all right? Is that okay? okay. Oh, sure. Let's see what he has to say. Let's see if it works. Do I know Mike? Have we spoken before? I don't believe you. I don't think you believe you've spoken to him before. I've spoken to him before. And of course, it's not working at all. So. And of course, it's not working. This is why we don't. This is why we haven't really been doing the calls a lot. Yeah. Because it uh, stuff breaks down, and you have to have like a really good connections, and it's um. I don't know. It's a whole thing. It's showbiz. It's show. This is showbiz. There's Mike Vita, but it said call. I, yeah, I'll try over to try over to. If you can't get him, then. Uh, okay. Let's see what happens. How's it going, guys? How are you, Mr. Ed Charada and Mr. There we Gunner? go. Okay. There we are. How are you, Mike? I'm doing pretty good, sir. I uh, just need to get my headphones in real quick. Right. Sorry about that. Some drums. So he's got some uh, bongos going, yeah. I think. What's going on, Mike? You still there? Sorry about that. I didn't mean oh, to, no you no know, cause inconvenience. 
Yeah, That's I'm still right. there. All right, no problem. That's um, so good. I have a, I have a question for uh, Ed Charada actually. Yes. Yes. Um, throughout all the films you watched throughout your glorious life, uh, Mr. Ed Charada, out of what was the one character you'd love to play as in a movie, if you know, if you have the choice. Uh, Batman. What? <laughs> Alfred. Alfred. Alfred, yes. One, one character that I would like to play in a movie. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I'd like to do Cyrano de Bergerac. I'd like to do uh, Alfieri, uh, not uh, Solieri in Amadeus. Uh, but, I mean, these have been done. Um, I'd like to play Da Vinci. Ah. Leonardo Da Vinci. Wow. Uh, I have to think of roles that you know I can look forward to, or roles that you know that uh, my age. Uh, I was working. I, I I've been working on a Don Quixote um, adaptation for the stage. Uh, I'd like to do that. Um, so there's three for you: Don Quixote, Solieri, and uh, Cyrano de Bergerac. Although I, I don't think I could handle the sword play anymore. I did I did so I did Sir, Cyrano de Bergerac when I was probably too young to be playing him. <laughs> so I'd like to do it again, but now did I don't. To, know how did you learn people. how to do that? Did you have to be trained or anything in the swords, or just? I took two of... years. Yeah, I took two years of stage combat. It was oh, hand wow. to hand, sword and dagger and foils. Wow. Um, and so I could fence uh, on stage pretty well. I uh, see. Like, to, I'd, uh, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see you with the sword do some stuff. Uh, okay. That was fun. I loved stage combat. It was one of my favorite uh, disciplines to learn because it was really clean cut. You know, a fight either sold or it didn't. It either worked or it didn't. It looked good or not. Right. You know, everything else is very subjective. You know, your inner life, your subtext, your, you know, um, your, your intentions and motivations and things are, are all kind of gray matter, but a, a a fight scene once you get into that. I played Tybalt in uh, one production of Romeo and Juliet, had a couple of fight scenes uh, before Romeo killed me and uh, <laughs> it was a lot yeah, of fun. It happens. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else Mike? Um, and also um, I have another question. Like, uh, for example, like I posted a uh, video on YouTube for the show about a, I think a week or two ago and you know I, in high school I've always been in TV and film. That's what I went to high school for. Oh. And I've always done camera work, no, like not camera work, but you know stuff behind the scenes. Uh -huh. And now I'm starting to do stuff in front of the camera. Uh -huh. Now I, I tend to be a very shy person, and I don't feel very comfortable being in front of the camera sometimes. Um, so in terms of advice, be, uh, giving to like a shy person like myself, what is the best advice could you give a person like me to you know help myself get better in front of the camera? You know, in terms of roles and I think like that. Uh, I defer to Michael Caine on this. Uh, he has a great workshop where he talked about a lesson he learned during Alfie, which was his breakout role. He found that if he made, if he talked to the camera as though the camera was uh, his best friend and he could confide in the camera, confiding in the camera is a nice thing because there's something really interesting about a lens that will find the truth. Uh, and it's about subtext. So if you forget everyone else that's on the set behind, you know, with the boom mic and the lighting guy and the and the sound mixer, you know, um, and and just look at that lens as though and, and picture someone you you want to confide in. I think you'll come across more comfortably. My question to you is, if you are uh, shy about being on camera. Uh, is this something that's required of you, or is it something that you want to get over? It's uh, something. It's something I like to get over because you know I like to do things on camera. This is even back in high school because like there were roles like oh I want to do that but I don't know I don't want to get in front of the camera I don't know I don't want you know. Mike, you got a really good, good presence about you. Even just being on here, I can't see you, but like your you, you speak is very clear. It's real good. You got a nice. Uh, you got a good vibe to you, man. You could do it. Thank you. Yeah, man. I, I think everyone it. believes, but except for you, you have to start believing. Yeah, you can do it. John's got the tip. I mean, I'm I'm go. just giving you uh, you know a lesson from somebody else. Also, working in front of a mirror helps. Uh, 
because uh, I used to do that before every important audition. I used to rent a, a room for a couple of hours that had a mirror, and there was nothing else to do there but rehearse. And after you've seen yourself in the mirror for a while, you realize um, there's nothing to be uh, shy about. It's just just working this body in this way. Um, think of the camera as your friend, work in front of a mirror, and uh, believe in yourself because, uh, yeah, everyone else does. I see what you mean. I, I appreciate it, guys. I thank you a lot. You got it, Mike. You can do it, man. Thank you, kind sir. Hope you guys have a great night tonight. All right, buddy. We'll, we'll talk to you next week, show 100. Sounds good. You're going to be there or what? I'll definitely be there. All right. See you there. All right, man. Peace All out. Right, bye. All right, man. That's going to wrap us up. I think, uh, Ed, I want to thank you very much for coming on, uh, filling in for OJ last second, and uh, knocking it out of the park once again, giving us uh, all kinds of good things today. So, good. Appreciate it a lot, man. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see you again. Maybe, maybe next week we'll pop in a little bit for the on the hundredth show. My pleasure. Yeah, we'll be talking about that. We'll, we'll give you a little. So we'll say hi to you next week, maybe. Okay. As well. Okay. And uh, of course, the Ed Trotta fan club is uh, is running wild right now on Facebook. Go check that out. Join it up. Post up. Ed's on there talking to everybody. Got a couple other people. We got a whole crew now. Yeah, I'm there. I st I actually started the page. I was I'm the uh, the president of the fan club. Can I can I have that title? You got it. You are. I'm the fan club president. I actually created the page, and now Ed's got all kinds of of uh, people in there uh, posting things, p pictures and stuff. Ed's on there himself. So please check it out. Of course, in the description of the video is the link to that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And um, the great Ed Trotta, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for coming on. And we'll see you. We'll see you next week. And then, of course, next week is the show 100, right here, Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Twitch.tv/slash Stay Ballsy. If you're not someone that usually watches the live version of the show, you watch the YouTube version. Try to. I know it's sometime. I don't know where you live. Maybe it's 4 a.m. where you live. So there's all kinds of different uh, time zones out there. I apologize for that. But uh, this is the one you want to try to try to check out if you can. We're gonna um, do our best to give you something good to check out, entertain you a little bit. And uh, have a good time as always. So, my friends, we'll leave you with that. Anything else, Ed? I guess not. So long, everyone. Been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure as always, John. Well, we thank you. Keep again. up the good work. We'll try. We'll try. Okay. So, for Ed, this is John signing off. Thank you for listening and being a part of John Ramble presents the very best in free and optional entertainment. Good night, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye.